Hi all. Okay, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. Uh, let me just first show you the uh, discount code screen. That should be appearing on my preview. So if you want to go premium, you get 15% off. Here's my voucher code. Uh, so King's Crusher. And um, basically, you could challenge me and any other streamer. Uh, so there's quite a lot of streamers and you get all these other perks as well so I hope you consider that uh, if you do enjoy this this stream uh, so 15% off kings plural crusher for me uh, okay and basically you know you you turn up like 20 minutes before 20 to 30 minutes and just send a challenge and it'll be in our challenge list and I just I just go from the challenge list so anyway which I'm gonna do now so let's go through the challenges this morning, the commutator, the commutator. Yeah, I had a rough week playing Leela Chess, <laughs> this uh, open source neural network thing. And I, I didn't play her this morning, though. But I feel I've lost an hour of sleep somehow. I don't know where that, why that happened. To. <laughs> so anyway, I'm hoping uh, to play OK today. <laughs> this is a sim I used to love the Simish positions love this I used to absolutely love this because it seems in a way a straightforward plan sometimes when you castle queenside and use like a kingside attack but there's another perk of this system and then I, I started to notice later is that you don't have to sometimes go for an attack you can just play on the queenside where you've got a space advantage so for example casting queenside king b1 uh, okay so prevention against uh, g4 anyway this this might play into this alternate plan I might try and show you this here king b1 rook c1 rook c2 knight c1 this sort of thing just to play for c5 because my advantage here is actually technically on the queen side uh, okay there is there is some pressure potentially against my king to factor in but um might be free tactically okay b4 is an example where i could be going for a queenside uh space thing uh space gain uh, but let's see knight b5 could be controversial c6 dc bc knight d6 it could be controversial uh, there might be a safer way of doing this yeah i could my king could be opened up here got to be careful on that as well that aspect if I'm doing this it's possible that maybe knight takes a3 there let's go with this maybe knight takes a3 is safer because knight before queen b4 yes so if I can just make this bishop get this bishop involved by vacating c1 so this bishop has a view on this diagonal um, and then uh, okay I'll dare take that I oh, hope I'm not going to regret this so that's a loose piece in the position yeah I guess this is double edged here in this exact position because my king is a potential target but at the moment it doesn't seem that scary the uh, potential attacks okay okay if I take that off for my uh, and then maybe rook b2 or c takes d c takes d and then knight c3 as long as I don't open up this bishop if I get knight c3 rook b2 there could be queen a5 right knight c3 rook b2 yeah these guys need to get into the game one of the worst things to happen which I hope doesn't happen is this bishop uh, getting very aggressive as part of the attack Knight d6 is on c4. Knight c3. Okay, this gives me surely d takes c here. Uh, 
All right, so knight c3 now. Now this this rook's exerting an influence there, but that queen's been blocked now. Knight d5 would seem. Um, how does knight d5 seem? I mean, it seems as though I'm hitting b6. It might might be plausible. Right? Why can't I just take that? Mm. My queen's protected. I think I'll just take that. Yeah, it seems safe enough now. Uh, all right, thanks, commentator. Yeah, sometimes you can play on the, the queen side. You don't have to do anything over there. But I think what prompted that even more was h5, actually, because it's, it gives me a little bit more time to play on the queen side, that sort of move. Uh, okay, so that was... I know that's a bit uncharacteristic of me to sort of play like that on the queen side, but I I was in the sort of... Yeah, I wanted to see if I can do it. Um okay but yeah h5 was was like prompting it anyway so sometimes if you play where you've got the space advantage um that's that sometimes works quite well so here um with this structure uh black doesn't want to lose that duo of pawns uh, my good friend Costas Carionis did a fantastic video about the power of the bishop pair once for my channel. He talked about this duo of pawns being like soulmates. You can see if, if that pawn left, then I'd have the f4 square, for example. So I'm trying to encourage that, but it's not going to go forward. And if I play d5, I think I'm playing into my opponent's hands somewhat. Uh, because then closing the center means the knight could swing over here at maybe f4 later. So the pawn duo is very nice at the moment. I wonder if I can just get this... Um, bishop for a moment without doubling my pawns but I really want this pawn duo to commit to get that f4 square I mean I think that would be some sort of concession there might be uh, uh, okay so I think I'm being attacked here what about okay if I play d takes and e takes here I'm playing the role of a defensive player this morning, it seems. <laughs> I'm being attacked by you guys. This is role re reversal, is it, this morning? Is it ro role reversal? Okay, I'll try and defend against this attack by taking here, taking the queens off and taking on f4. So we've got role reversal, the cheek of it, the cheek of it. I, 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 <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I, I'm thinking I can uh, hold this position again. I'm, I'm looking at the ingredients of the attack, and I'm not too impressed at the moment. Without the queens on, yeah. With my control of d5, I, I'm not too impressed at the moment by this attack. As Voldemort said <laughs> to, to, to Harry Potter and gang. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Rook D3. Rook D3. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Oh, hang on. Hang on. B3 and C4 are vulnerable. Okay. And there's A4 as well. There's Knight A4. Okay. Rook B1. Can I get away Rook B1 or can I take it here? Okay. I don't know. I'm thinking Rook B1 might be handy. The center surely is being undermined a little bit here. This pressure on e5 must mean something, surely. Oh, there's bishop f5. Okay. There's bishop f5. Rook b2 seems a bit poxy. Hmm. Okay, if I try and lock down with a4, bishop f5 is the scary one to me. Rook b2. Where is this knight going? 
If I just get the rooks off with rook d1, rook bd1, if I do this. Now, if I took in bishop c7 as rook d3, if I play bishop c7, just trying to grab that that file for a moment, try and control this file. I'm hitting a5 as well. Yeah, I can get the rooks off and still hit a5, so I'll do that. So a5 is hit. Pawns go up in value in the end game. Uh, so bishop c7 here looks okay. Actually, I've had a thought about this. A a five for a six there. Oh, there's knight c five on the way. Can I play a five anyway? Knight c five b four. What is attacked next? Knight a six, bishop d six. Oh, I could just take that. Oh, I could take that pawn. Oh, my pets. Oh, there's bishop. Yeah, bishop d6. Okay. There's knight a6. All right, but I've just lost the key pawn. Maybe knight e4 here. Actually, if I'm double attacking h7, oh, that bishop's going to get trapped. g6, bishop e5 later. Is that bishop trapped, or can I nick that pawn over there? There's also consideration for bishop c6 here. For a6. Okay, c5 as well, knight c4. Bishop c7. Okay, c5 is one step. Got to watch the clock as well. Bishop c6 for a6. Bishop a6, b7, okay. Can this bishop go away? Can my king go up there? C takes is looks like the pawns are dangerous. If I can get onto the dark squares without losing my pawns. Okay, so this this one. I can create a pass pawn over here. And cut the king over there. Bring my king more aggressively. It's good my bishop's back in the game. I was a bit worried about that. All right, let's, let's keep the squares cut and try and have the option of going over here to b7. If I take, and I've got the option of going to b7. For this a pawn should be winning. This a pawn was scary earlier as well, so it's very scary here. That was a bit of a grind. This game, I was wondering about this game actually. My bishop being trapped at one point, or my king being trapped. Yeah, it's a, some element of luck there. I think I had. Okay, thanks, Zermist. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. A 
if I play a uh, pop link system, right, so A4 and uh, F4, G4, I think this is uh, interesting, this pop link system. Uh, so if I play G4 and Knight G3, Okay, uh, so g4 and um, bishop e3 and queen f2. Okay, so let's see, rook d1, maybe e5 is, is possible. I think, uh, oh, okay, can I clamp over there? Is it worth it? I think b5 is, is a bit scary. E5, I'm weakening my pawn too much. G5, G4 and F5 is a bit... don't know, I'm, I'm going to be subjected to some pressure here if I'm not careful. Um, okay, how to play this? Interesting. Intriguing. I wonder... Uh, yeah, I'm not too comfortable. I don't want to get too short on time either. Uh, but no, not 100% sure here. <laughs> Got to do something. Uh, I could. Okay, I'll start with f5. F5. Okay, maybe, maybe uh, it looks a bit weakening. Queen F2, okay, if I take it here. Is it, I don't know, B3 might be something. Might, I've got a loose piece now uh, on C3. Which has been exploited. Yeah, I thought my position was a bit loose. I don't like this. Yeah, I just lost the pawn. Yeah, I was worried about that earlier. Now that's become a real possibility on the board. Okay, quick queen f2 to uh, stop queen h4. I don't want to open up this d file. Yeah, I'm under pressure. Yeah, okay. Um, mm, is, I've done something a bit lazy about it in this game. I haven't done something quite appropriate somewhere to have this. If the rook moves FG though for Queen F7, mm. Rook F2 for Bishop F1, is that possible for Rook H2 later? see to do Try and tap into this Queen's location there's always Queen G5 though I'm not sure what, the, um, odd, what would be the big deal about this there's always Queen G5 mm, that seems a bit radical all right if, if I take that
There could be a. I'm hoping there's a pawn target. Like, if I can get to play um, bishop e2. Alright, so I'm a pawn down still, right? But I'm not sure how easy it is at the moment to exploit. If he's got a pawn target on h5, I go with trying to attack that guy. Oh, his king could be good in the end game. Oh no. Wonder if I can hold that ending. All the pawns are on dark squares away from my bishop. I've got the liability of pawns on light squares. I I, I think I will accept the draw. <laughs> yeah. Alright, thanks. Yeah. Well played. I I didn't get much from that opening, I felt yeah. Barunda. Okay. Baruda. Baruda. I, I thought black would be better in the ending. <coughs> if the king comes in, my pawns are all on light squares. So if I I guess my king could stop his king making too much progress. Um. Mm. Mm, so there's a opponent disconnected. Mm. All right, I think this allows d5. This could be a good space advantage. If I get to play d5, I quite often enjoy the games here <coughs> on bullet generally. Um, mm, okay. Bishop g4, I think there's knight takes e5. As if it takes, then there's bishop b5, check. Okay, I'll try and chase this knight. Might be worth taking on e5. Bishop e3. Alright, so uh, f3. If queen d2, I mean, I think there's always knight g4. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll do this for a moment. But anyway, I don't think knight g4 is a big deal necessarily. Um, okay, if I can castle queenside. Okay, I'll take that. That might be a target on G6. D6 looks as though it's handy. If a bishop takes C5 sometimes, sometimes hitting C5 is good. Or undermining C5. Uh, so I think here I'm hitting C5 at least. Alright. Actually, there might be bishop takes g5 here, I just realised. There's a pin here as well. I think bishop takes is possible. Can <clears throat> mm, I take this one as well? I hope. Hmm. All right, I'll um, take on F8 here. Okay. Um. Really? 
real burrow. Uh, let's try E4 here. Hi, is, is real fan around? Oh, is my, is my connection still there? Um, mm, odd. Okay, hope he's around. All right, might have to uh, a ball or something. Okay. Alright, let's, let's go on to the next challenge. Uh, Cicero. Alright, quite like the Austrian attack. Austrian attack, yeah. Um, can I get the queens off? I want to be able to castle. Maybe I'm still playing. Try and open the H file. C1 plausible. And so HG looks a little bit as though it could be dangerous with 95 and 97. FD capturing away from the center hmm, might be plausible. It looks as though 95 have got a reasonable position here. <clears throat> so I'm on E7. Oh, that C file looks handy. So B4 here. There's Bishop D4 check. I guess. E6, B5. Was there knight D4? Knight D4, knight C7, I'm on E6. I want to try and blast through this C file. That's intriguing, knight d4. All right. Okay, I have to protect that. Okay, I've still got this c file, I think. That's it on d5. So rook c7 threat. Um, I still go with that. I think. All right, now bishop h6 looks like something as well potentially, or rook b7. I think it's nice that I've cut his king off. Um, I 
Bishop c3 here tactically, if he takes then king f2. Bishop c3 seems nice. If bishop c5, rook c5. If bishop e3, there's rook g7. Check. So if check, I'll take here. I think bishop c3. Check it out a bit more. Hold on. I think so. I think so. Hope so. Oh, hang on. There's rook c2. Oh, Muppets. There's rook c2. Am I just blunder the piece? Oh, it's rook c2. <laughs> oh, Muppets. <sighs> Okay, rook c2 was a bit scary. Uh, we'll take total a7. Or just king, maybe king d2 here. <laughs> king d2 might be better. There's rook f2, king one, you can repeat. King e2. Oh, let's, oh, let's try this. Maybe King D1 there to stop Rook C2. Or is it just uh, now I'm a bit oh, just wondering. I'm just getting worse position. Try for this pawn, maybe rook c6. That's a good pass pawn there. I'm not convinced anymore. Losing these guys. No, I'm losing too many pawns here. I don't want a rook c5. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe my king's over, should go over here. Alright, can I at least push this guy soon? Yeah, quick pass pawn. Still cut off, but I've really, I'm really running out of pawns here. <laughs> Can I get my king over here? Uh, uh, if I took that, no, I think his pawns just run away. seem a bit vulnerable here. Oh, I think I'll offer a draw here, which he doesn't want. <laughs> um, Hmm. 
Mm. Now I go behind the pawn. If you, yeah, if you get the position where you can go behind the pawn, then it's difficult, I hope, to make progress from here. <clears throat> Oh, it was really tricky. I played it. Okay, Goggin Pool. Hmm, I had to try and accelerate a pass pawn there. It had to be quality versus quantity at those pass pawns. Um. Aggressive. Okay, I'm hoping I'll be okay here. Right, getting some space. Bishop e6 and rook b8 will be good. Bishop e6 and rook b8. I'm thinking queen d2, king h7, maybe to shield h6. But I think this b file looks uh, like something. Okay, I'll take on b2 here. Play C four, so maybe C five later. Um, uh, okay, this pawns. Uh, okay, I'll take on B one and take on A five. I think. And king this guy back somewhere. Not going to d2. I don't know. I'll take the center pawn, I think. Hmm. I can get this file with rook being. Okay, there's a check. King h8. Maybe, but if I can get the queens off, if bishop b2 c3, if I can get the queens off, I'll be a bit happier, I think. So knight f6 check trying to deflect the bishop, but I think, um, or maybe king g7 check, king h8, or just king h8. Now if bishop b2 c3, I think. Get the queens off here is what I really wanted. Just to feel a bit safer about things. Alright, so knight e3 looks good. And maybe just get the rooks off with bishop a2 and rook b1. And this c2 would be vulnerable. So knight e3, bishop a2, rook, rook b1. Alright, there's a rook check here. Uh, 
I'll just use that pin, I think. Just to get everything off. Yeah. All right, this pawn's a bit of a runner. I think this pawn's running. I'll take that. I'll try and avoid stalemates. Yeah. King H2 is possible. Or G4. Okay, thanks. Go again. So, MGTOW. Let's try B3 today. A little bit. B3. So a sort of dark square grip with B3 here. Bishop D3 might be... I'm not sure. Maybe. 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 Sometimes this is a... I'll try and discourage Bishop A6 with Queen E2. Although A5 could be played. If if he wants a five bishop a six. Hmm. Right, I like the idea of rook f three to g three here. D four with g three. I think I still get that rook to be attacking in this position. <clears throat> right, so knight c3, yeah, take take, queen takes, um, mm. okay, what about knight, uh, knight g4, anything, okay, just check this knight c3 again, knight takes e5, there is knight b5, actually, That might be making it uh, worth it. I don't think there's a solution, Zug. Queen c6, bishop takes e5, a6, knight c7. I'm not sure I'm getting anything there, really. What about just knight a3 if I'm going to play like that? The knight can reroute later. If I can play. Um, <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll I'll try this. I'll try this. Let's see, takes takes takes. I mean, there isn't knight b five there, but immediately there's knight b five. Uh, knight b five. The queen moves. Do I really get anything? F takes, I might do. A6, knight d6, bishop d6, ed, queen d6. I'm on g7 then. Am I not? Alright, try this. Knight b5. Yeah, so F takes and knight d6. Trying to stretch the bishop on this diagonal, basically. If I can recapture like this, opening up the bishop again on that focal point, g7. So queen c6, F takes. A6, knight d6. Takes, takes, I've got the focal point, I've got the pin on f6 there. So this might justify this configuration. This bishop and rook needs to be somehow justified. So queen c6, f takes, a6, knight d6, bishop d6, ed, queen d6, 
Bishop F6 to follow. Like a free check, I might just take that. I don't think that does anything too special. Hmm. Yeah, I think if I had done the ordinary f takes, queen takes, the, the knight would be pinned actually. So knight b5, queen takes b2. So I have to be very careful how I play this position with these loose pieces, like on b2. Um, Alright, so I want to play knight d6, I believe now. Try and open up this bishop. I think there's also a free reign on the king side here. I think there's possibility of queen h5 for queen takes h6. Queen h5 looks interesting. Um, oh, that looks a bit too weak, weakening. That looks as though it's inviting Queen h5. It's like saying, come to dinner, that sort of move to me. Uh, okay, I will, I will pop in for dinner over here. Okay, I'll pop in for dinner. Of Queen H five. <clears throat> right, looks as I can gang up on F seven at the minimum with Rook F seven here. Th this looks over actually because there's queen it looks as though it's it looks over to me actually it really does if i can find one or two accurate tactical moves uh here it should be over as far as my intuition is telling me because f7 is a problem this diagonal is now a problem G6 is potentially a problem, even if I did sack on F7 to open up G6 for the Queen. Right, G6 here is like, I think that's a mate in two, isn't it? All right, thanks, Mink. Yeah, I think um, G5 helped my cause. Thanks. Uh, okay. Rule of arrow. Try the system. So the tango. here usually to have this sort of position the bishop's quite nice on the dark squares oh my intuition is happier here <laughs> um yeah Let's see. Uh, 
maybe okay what happens now what happens now 91 that's not a four same thing h3 there's potentially h5 i've played these positions so much knight f4 is pretty juicy usually if h3 knight takes h3 so much especially a, a bullet time draw i've won so many games from this sort of position because this bishop's with, without a counterpart so it's like a major trump card in the position but it's accentuated because there's pawns on knight squares so the dark squares are even weaker the knight on f4 is very aggressive the rook doesn't I don't even need to castle the rook can be made more aggressive here with h5 There's focal points on G2, F2. C5 seems far away at the moment. This lockdown on the dark squares. I think H4 is worth considering. Change one, or just leaving it there. Or rook h6, rook h6 for rook g6. Just trying to problem with h4. I can imagine the lines keep closed after knight h1. If I played rook h6, I'm really trying to open up that h file. I think rook h6, I've played for rook g6 before quite a lot as well this might be the way to try and keep a critical line open rather than h4 although that looks awkward it's legal it's possible and unless I'm sacking something later I, d I think this is a natural way to try and activate the whole h file maybe even later king e7 this one <clears throat> to join that rook on the h file or pretty soon king e7 one problem is yes if he takes then knight f5 like queen h4 looks usually it's a killing move queen h4 in this sort of position it looks pretty killing here there's not Queen here or here, but there's Queen G3. If Knight takes this Queen G2, I'm threatening then. Um, well, Queen G2 is the threat. So I think Queen G3, unless I'm missing a mate. Queen G3 here. Well, I'm threatening actually after bishop f3 knight h3 king h1 knight f2 king g1 rook h1 mate okay so I think I'm going to go with this knight h3 let's double check so it doesn't matter about knight takes rook there's going to be a double check so king h1 knight takes f2 Double check. Yeah, I've won so many games from that opening. It's like, thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, killer cat. Okay, killer cat. <clears throat> I love the mechanics of Greek gifts activation of 
pieces how the pieces can just sort of get really active from default positions you know like if you leave your rook on h8 it's like exploiting the defaults if you work in IT and do interfaces you're always trying to exploit the defaults because people don't change their default configurations it's like that on the chessboard sometimes pieces are just on default squares you want to have them activated quite naturally without them doing anything so the Greek gift to me is a representative of that where you know you're just using the rooks where they are and just activating a lot of pieces and stuff uh, so F, F takes and then D5 here for E4 looks good unless there's a knight g5 okay there might be a knight g5 and i'm hoping this is not too critical okay so if i can play b6 and then knight f5 that does seem naturally that i can play queen h4 here with that knight being kicked away any f3 there's knight e3 i think queen h4 is looking very dangerous queen h4 to me is hitting some soft spots sometimes uh, uh okay so bishop d7 so queen h4 looks as though oh there's also knight d4 here for bishop b5 that is a loose piece in the position. Knight takes d4, bishop takes b5. It's very important to look at these forcing moves all the time, of course, especially in blitz. The forcing moves gives a kind of, for me, um, functional awareness. Things don't just look pretty. They have functionality, but you only sort of see that once you examine all the forcing moves. So yeah, this is a loose piece in the position. It does look as though knight takes d4 is a sensible thing here. It also would seem to win the exchange after. You do have to adapt your plans, of course. I know I mentioned queen h4, but you adapt your plans with the opponent's moves. So thanks, killer cat. Uh, okay. Um, oh! Are there, are there any new challenges? New challenges this week? What's happening? Because um, we've played Goggin Pool. Any other challenges at the moment? Kramnik students, do you want an unrated? Kramnik students, are you awake? Sanke, are you awake? Come on, guys. Challenge me. Seems to be short on challenges at the moment. Anyone want to challenge? Okay, we played Gong and Pool before. I'm going to play him again. I'm run, I've run out of challenges this week, guys. <laughs> okay. All right, if you want to challenge me again, just challenge me again. <clears throat> As well. So this is a three-minute game. I think knight um, d4 is a trap. I'm taking that bishop b5. Bishop g5 is also another sort of trap here to win the queen. Thanks, got some challenges going here. Yeah. Great, good. Ah, uh, oh, I can't accept from non premium though. You have to be a premium member still, I'm afraid. Okay. This does seem to win the queen here. Okay. Um, I'll pick Bishop B5 check. Uh, I'm 
to take that. Or maybe around here to try and win e6 for knight f5. I could take here for queen d7. Or just knight f5, maybe even better. For queen e7 to keep the two pins sometimes is a. Uh, oh, hang on, c6. Uh, maybe that wasn't clever. Uh, that wasn't clever, was it? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Queen D6. Queen B8. Pick up the rook. Queen G6. Alright, thanks. Going in. Okay. Okay, got a good batch of challenges now. Sanket. Thanks. So A6 and Bishop A7. Oh, casting into it. I haven't castled yet, so I'm going to use the H pawn instead. It looks pretty dangerous to me that I can do this. If I play c6 here, I'm threatening knight f3 check now, which would be immediately terminal for white. Because bishop takes that doesn't look appetizing for the king's safety. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks as though this is pretty terminal. Uh, queen d7 threatens rook h1, queen h3. Yeah, the threat is rook h1 check here. This uh, this kind of thing with um, knight e5 to f3, I was actually thinking of doing a trap video a few days ago. I won this bullet game very, very quickly, which helped me win this bullet tournament. But it involved knight e5 and uh, a quick landing on f3. But I, I wasn't sure it was worth this video. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it is that sort of trap idea in a way, I guess. Or is it just about king safety? Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, this looks pretty much over. On knight h4, I think I just, uh, thanks, I think I just take it, if queen h3. So if knight h4, I, I'll just take it, I think, and then queen h3. And there's no escape from either G2 or... Yeah. All right. Thanks for the game there. Okay. Kramnik student. <clears throat> Do I dare play knight c6 against Kramnik student? <laughs> T. 
So we have a Scotch game, do we? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> if I tried knight g4 here would that be too cheeky because he didn't rule out knight g4 did he I hate to be so crude but you see there's a fine line between madness <laughs> and good moves yeah but sometimes you can play like crude madness if you think there's a few considerations to make in general on the pieces that easy to evict can they do useful things around the king so here I think some of those considerations okay queen h4 there's h3 here and I'll be losing material but other than that I, I think it's nice to have a knight hanging around here in a crude manner I can bounce back to e5. There's queen h4 on the cards. He's just activated this rook. Maybe I can even switch this rook. There, there's a fine difference between playing like a mad hacker and being justified to do so. So some of the considerations. Are my pieces okay? Have I got a bad piece? I don't seem to have a bad piece. In fact, this rook seems as though it can be swing, swinging across. Queen h4 provokes a weakness. Knight e5, f4. That could be a problem with my king in the center. However, I will do this. <clears throat> now, knight e5, f4. Okay, I get it. f4 could be useful. But there might be bishop g4 here. Or bishop h3 takes takes f4 bishop g4 might be more dangerous f3 if takes takes that looks pretty dangerous do i provoke f3 bishop h5 looks dangerous i don't know Bishop h3 looks a little bit dangerous. Rook a5 looks dangerous. It looks as though rook a5 is a useful attacking move. You might have b4 though. Right, let's start the ball rolling with this. <clears throat> F3, bishop h5 to keep the pawn pinned. Discourage f4. Rook a5 after. Well, there might be bishop f3 here. Bishop f3, queen h3, bishop e2, rook a5. Idea, knight g6, rook g5. So bishop f3 here looks... So how would he evict any pieces here? So queen h3, bishop e2, rook a5, f4, knight g6. I don't know, it looks dangerous to me. Potentially, maybe this is unsound. I could be playing it in an unsound way. It is possible. I just need this extra rook, I think. Okay, g5. Okay, g5 is on the way. No, f4, maybe he's got a point, f4. f4 might refute this attack. Okay. Queen h4, f4, knight g6 for knight f4 though. Party's not over, I think. If I can get knight to f4. Oh, hang on. It might be. Oh, no, I might have overshot this. Queen g3. Queen g3 is the concern. Uh, 
if I take that keeps my king safe and the knight I fought after. Okay, I'm playing with less attacking pieces than I would like. Mm, H5 for rook H6 would be really dangerous. Just two moves. H5 and rook H6. Except he's got queen G3. That's a pain, Queen G3. If I start with Rook A5, Rook A5 for check, and then Rook E5 is dangerous. Yeah, I think Rook A5 is an immediate activation of one Rook. This takes two. Okay. Rook A5. No, I'm not sure Rook A5 does anything here. <laughs> Let's just cancel. Rookie eight and then F Right, it's amazing that there with rook e5, rook e1. So you can win my queen, but he gets mated. Hang on, bishop f5 is threatening mate here. Oh. Again, rook, rook e5, the bishop f5, and the queen takes. Rook e5, rook e5, rook e1 is mating. So rook e5 is a possible move here, it seems. I've only got 19 seconds. Seventeen seconds. Okay. No panic. Checking on Queenie Five. H6 or G5? Maybe G5 with rook G4. I didn't deserve that. I was, that was too cheeky on my behalf. I, I deserve to be punished. I should have been punished. Okay. I, I got away with it. I got away with it. No, no, no. I, I knew it. I knew it. I, I was thinking to myself, I, I've been far too outrageous. 
<laughs> it's going to be punished. And I'm short on time here as well. Okay, it's only that Rookie 5 gave me a little bit of a counterplay when, when Rookie 5 was loud. Uh -huh. That was naughty of me. That was naughty. <sighs> Mind you, I, I can't help playing like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just when you thought you were getting refined positional ideas from from these streamers, and then I come along and just play like this. And you're wondering, <laughs> and you're wondering, oh, I, 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 all that position of I've been learning, all gone to waste. <laughs> so Bishop A6, yes, I'm considering Bishop A6. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to ruin the, ruin the uh, positional understanding. Okay, Bishop takes H6, check, Queen H5. I mean, it looks dangerous to me. I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks it looks really dangerous to me. This stuff. It really does. Okay. There was a day I I I, I missed this opportunity of rook h3. It was pointed out by an engine. It's like supporting myself in post mortem analysis. These ideas of rook h3 are dangerous. So you know, when I don't play this stuff, it gets pointed out to me anyway, even by engines. This stuff is dangerous, man. Rook g3, queen h5. <clears throat> Rook g3 and queen h5. <sighs> Or bishop g7, rook g3, queen h5. Rook g3 is, is mega dangerous. I think this is a dangerous position. I'm going to tear into the king, but I've got to be concerned about a few things, I think. Although not that many. Uh, here, I wouldn't say there's that many things to worry about here, necessarily. Okay, yeah, thanks for the game, Bill. Yeah, that was a very dangerous position, uh, yeah, for King's safety. That's the gambit, yeah. I can't help it. <clears throat> Ninety five is threatened, right? Oh, okay, other stuff. Uh, is this like the Snyder gamut? Some sort of gamut, not Snyder gamut, some sort of gambit. G four ninety five after <clears throat> Alright, if I took that off and just play Queen E two or there's Queen E two. Maybe Queen E two is better. So I just want to play Bishop F4 and Castle Queen, so I'll be I'll be happy enough with compensation. Bishop D2 and Castle Queenside. If he wants to stop me casting Queenside, I think Bishop D2 might be the way to go. I don't think he wants this pawn. It's in the pawn too far, or maybe yeah, it could be technicality. Oh, there's that. Ah. Oh. I didn't want that to happen. 
Oh, that's a pain. No, my position feels really loose, unfortunately. Yeah. Far too loose. Okay, it feels far too loose. Rook f1, g5. If h5, you know, g5 is. Uh, I'll lose the bishop. Okay, can you neutralize this guy? Try and get the e4 square. Maybe bishop g3. Knight d5, bishop g3. I don't like the look of this. Anyway. Try and avoid this negativity for a moment. If I can just comfort a few squares, if possible. All right, knight three, I take there. Okay, so bishop g three might be possible. I think I have to take on d five though, because otherwise, if I play bishop g three, there's always knight e three after. So I might as well take on d five here. Rook c1 seems as though it could be handy. There's rook c3, potentially. Uh, bishop b4. Can I do this double rooks or something? Rook c3, is that plausible? Rook c3, rook d4, bishop g3. Right, I'll try this. Rook d4, bishop g3. Otherwise, I'll double the rooks. Bishop b4, rook b3. Uh, Alright, is rook c4 plausible here? King the Queen for a moment. Queen G five is on E five. Alright, can I play for H four? Reinforce E five and play for H four on G takes. Desperate measures and all that. Would he sack the exchange here? I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe there's rook h1 after. Alright, so queen e4 here. Oh, there's queen f3. If he wants, there's queen f3. Doesn't look. Yeah, it looks a bit bad actually. Okay. All right, there's maybe there's D four. Rook b4, that's bishop c3. So I'm going to have to lose the exchange now. I can't afford to lose um, d4, unfortunately. Target here. Get something at least. I've 
got past pawn. I got some compensation. That's what I wanted. Some compensation with the exchange. The bishop's pretty good at the moment. Let's get my rook back. <clears throat> Bishop, oh, King C4 then. Because Bishop E5, Rook E5, King C4. For Rook E1, coming up. Still, I think I got compensation. Um, that cuts the rook. Rook b1 or h5. What are you doing about this pawn? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Hang on. There's rook c1. I've just realized he's got rook c1 on the cards. Okay, what do I do about that? Rook C2 and Rook C1. Just, just win, just win. I, I wanted to give him a chance to win. He did say, let me win. I tried to let him win. I played on nine. There's rook c2 to c1. But, you know, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes my competitive streak takes over and I'll gamble and gamble and gamble. That's what happened there. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh... Uh, but no, he did. He did provoke me with the nickname. Fine, <laughs> I let him win. <laughs> I, I'm knowing that. I don't know. I think. I think it's a tragedy. I think the position's an absolute tragedy that he's got rook c2 to c1 because I thought I had reasonable compensation for the exchange. The b pawn came a killer very, very rapidly. I thought not only was my king going to come back for the pawn the rook was going to come back for the pawn i thought no problem got past h pawn strong bishop but yeah okay okay uh, uh, i think it's time now so i'll just conclude with the uh uh the other screen yeah so if you want to become a premium member um Let's see, have a look at this again. Voucher code King's Crusher, 15% off. So remember, it's a fantastic site. You've got lots of premium features as well, even if you don't want to play the streamers. So it's just an added bonus. You can get to play all the streamers. You just turn up 20 to 30 minutes before and send off your challenge. So, But there's also tons of premium features generally. So uh, I hope you really consider that because it's a great site, Chess24. So I hope you have a great rest of the Sunday and uh, see you next week. Okay, thanks so much.